Amen, amen, amen. We should be willing to say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Kind God, our Father, we ask you now, God, to quieten our spirits. Let us focus now, God, on your clear word. Help us now, God, to take it in seriously. Help us now, God, to be able to recognize that it is you talking and not myself. Thank you now, God, for letting me stand once again in this hill of Zion. Oh God, we know your word is already anointed, but let your anointing flow through me today. So your people will hear what thus says the Lord. And we pray, God, that they will respond accordingly. But thank you, God, for giving me one more chance, one more opportunity to be this vessel that shares to your people. Hide me now, God, behind the sacred vessel that I may not be a distraction, but only your word come through. For these blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. amen. Again, we say good morning to our Facebook and YouTube family. Always good to have them with us every morning. Amen. Our word is coming from the book of James. Chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. And this morning we'll be using the New Living Translation for your hearing. We ask you to buckle your seatbelts and be ready for this word this morning. Because we believe that this word is a transforming word. James, the first chapter, verses 12 through 18. Again, the New Living Translation for your hearing is what we will be using this morning. Amen. Give you just a quick minute to find the book of James, chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. Amen. And the Word of God says, God blesses those who patiently endure. Your Bible may say, whose man remains steadfast. Amen. Enduring testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will what? Receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Yeah, yeah. And remember, he wants you to remember something, what? When you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desire, which uh, entices us and drags us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, guess what it does? It gives birth to death. So don't be misled by dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or uh, cast a shifting shadow. That's what I love about God. He, he, he never changes. You can count on him being the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Verse 18, he uh, chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creations, became his prized possession. Our key verse for your hearing of the text this morning is coming from verse 12 as you take your seat says this, God blesses those who patiently endures testing and temptation 
Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Just for a few minutes, if God would allow, I'd like to preach for this thought. Are you mature enough? Are you mature enough? Sometimes when we take an assessment of our life, we may become disappointed at the level we are at at the moment. For we say to ourselves, as long as I've been a Christian and the works that I have put into this journey, life should be treating me better than it is. And then the doubt uh, regarding our faith began to creep in. And even when we ask others to evaluate us, what is wrong with me? What do you see? They'll come to the conclusion as well that it is our faith that is lacking. But beloved, can I share with you uh, something this morning uh, that I'm sure you're not expecting. There's really, there's really, hear me now, there's really nothing wrong with your faith. But it's your spiritual maturity. I've discovered that faith can only work to the level that you become mature in exercising your faith. Right. Beloved, your belief system is fine, but what uh, is hampering you is your uncontrolled lifestyle, which cancel out what your faith want to do in your life. Uh, Are you mature enough? It's like this. You're, you've made up your mind to lose weight and you're exercising every morning. Mm -hmm. Great, that's great. Uh, you believe, you believe that you're going to lose weight, but at nightfall, because of how you feel about yourself, you continue to eat unhealthy. And so what happens? What you did in the morning get canceled out by the evening. In other words, it's not your faith, but it's all about your maturity and how you walk. Well, Paul said it like this in 1 Corinthians 3 and verses 1 through 3. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men and women, but as to men and women of flesh, as to infants. In Christ, I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now you are not yet able, for you are still fleshly. For since there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not fleshly and are you not walking like mere men? Beloved, it's about our spiritual maturity. Hebrews 5, 13 through 14 says, For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature who become or who became of practice. There it is. You have got to practice what you listen to and what you preach. If you don't put it into practice, all it is is noise. Have I got a witness? Ephesians 4, 13 and 14 says this. Until we are all attained to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the status which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. But the 
trickery of men by craftiness and deceitful schemes. In other words, when you become mature, every little word that somebody gives you don't move you out of what God has already proven to you. And that's our problem. Everybody can come and knock on our door and tell us they've got a new religion and we are ready to run towards it knowing full well that's not what God has been teaching you all the time. I never can understand how some people jump and run to a new church and a new ministry, they call it, and the person who is preaching is preaching nothing what God is all about. But because it's a new thing, it's a new movement, we want to be in the latest. And now, the latest won't get you into heaven. What you need to stand with, what has been tried and proven true. Have I got a witness? And so uh, uh, my, my mother would say, you, 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 you don't need that junk food, baby. What you need is something that will stick to your bones. If you're going to be able to be strong and stand like your father, you're going to have to have the proper food. And so we've got to cut out some of that mess that you've been eating through the day. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got to become mature. Yeah. Beloved, it's clear that until we move to a greater spiritual mature level in our lives, Satan, like the scripture stated, will constantly bring and create havoc in our lives. Yeah. For the scripture tells us that we are faced with trials and tribulations and attacks. Oh, the word of God says they are going to come. In the book of James, just above this, you're going to see this. He says that count it all joy. No way can then we count it all joy if we have not moved to a greater spiritual level in Christ. Only then, hear me now, only then can we acknowledge what may be happening to our bodies, but we want to allow it to affect our mind. Amen. Oh, I can be in hell, but I don't have to act like I'm there. Uh, Paul says that we are in this prison and we're chained to the inner prison, but we begin to praise God uh, for we begin to sing Zion songs that the Lord heard us and he shook the foundation of the prison and loosed us. Uh, I want to let somebody know today, if you begin to praise God, he'll lose some stuff in your life. If you begin to acknowledge how awesome he is and keep your mind staying on Jesus, watch Jesus begin to make a way for you. Oh, beloved, we've got to grow up. We've got too many infants sitting in the pews every Sunday. Too many infants need to be pampered and uh, babied and burped and uh, coerced and, and told it's going to be all right. When you ought to know it's going to be all right because I told you this isn't the first time you've seen this, but somehow you have no staying power. Because you need somebody to always feed you and baby. Let me give you some characteristics of mature Christians. There's seven. I'm going to give you. Of course, there's more. But if you're not having five of these, you need to ask God to help you. Because five is eighty percent. Five point six, really. If you're looking at seven. And getting 80% out of 7 is 5.6. Okay. Here it is, the first one. Mature Christian characteristic. They know and live the word of God. Uh, maybe that's where we got to start at right there. We don't know no word. And so when crisis comes, we don't know how to go to our word and fend off some stuff or have it in our spirit that knowing that I, I know what God says that he has promised to prosper me not to harm me but he's got plans for me and if God brought this it isn't about 
God bringing it to oh, allowing it to hurt me. It is to what? Strengthen me. For if you look at Romans, Romans says trials have come not to harm you, but to strengthen you. A true Christian know the word and live it. The second thing they have, prayer is their DNA. Have you prayed lately? I told you some time ago that DNA, discernment, the nature of Christ, and anointing. The reason why you don't have no discernment, you don't have the na nature of Christ, and you sure don't have no anointing to remove some things out of your life, is because you don't have no prayer life. Number three, evangelism of Christ come easy. You should not stumble when somebody asks you, tell me about Jesus. Oh, how much time you got? You should be ready to pour out your soul. Have a seat. Let's talk about Jesus. Humility oozes from you. Number five. Mature Christians guard their lips. Everything don't come out of their mouth. Oh, they may think it, but they don't let it come out. Mm -hmm. Number six, they grieve their sin. But look at here, they repent quickly. Ah, what bothers me if somebody said they're mature. Oh, well, I had a right to do it. No, you sin. Well, I ain't the only one. Don't you know it isn't about what others have done. You need to come quickly to confession and repent of your way. Who would want to get caught in the death angel coming when you were stubborn talking about, I ain't going to say I'm sorry. Beloved, that's what we ought to be about if we are what? Mature. And number seven, their attitude meter is not always running out of control. Those who are mature, you can count on them with even keel attitude. They ain't always up and down. And, uh, y'all go check and see what he's going to be like the day when we all come in. You ever been in a, a work for a boss? I had a boss like that. They'd send somebody in and say, you, you, you be the tester. When you go ask him this, see how he responds. If he does this, like, we ain't coming in. We ain't going to ask him today. We're going to wait till he's in a good mood. You are a Christian. You are mature. You ought to be able to have a conversation about anything. Yes. Things are going on that is disturbing. But you ought to be able to have a calmness about this. Y'all sitting there, y'all don't know what's going on. Mother, Mother Rogers just had an attack. EMS just came and just picked her up. But we've got to go on and have worship and pray in the spirit that whatever's going on with Mother Rogers, when she gets to the hospital right now, the doctor is going to take care of it. And Jesus is in the everlasting with her right now. We ought to be able to shout glory and send God a message that we know she's going to be all right. I know she want to be here to worship, but an attack came on her. And we just called him that. And they just take her out. But we still give him God glory. That's what maturity is all about. Beloved, can you see these in your life. I told you in order to have 80%, you got to have at least five of them. And someone may be saying, well, what's the opposite of maturity? Just uh, just these right here saying the other way. Uh, you don't know no Bible. You don't pray often. You have a problem with evangelizing Jesus. You definitely don't have any humility and your lips say everything. You don't want to forgive anybody and you won't forgive yourself and then your attitude is jacked up. If you have those problems, then you are immature. And God is saying, I'm coming back, not for a perfect church, but a mature church. That's what he wants us to do. All that we're doing day in and day out is trying to mature you 
So when Satan thinks he can destroy you, when yeah. Satan thinks that he can set you up and disturb you from continuing to praise God, you say, no, Satan, I did a little growing since the last time you attacked me. Uh, I've got a little word in me, Satan, since the last time you attacked me. And Satan, I want to let you know that don't bother me like you think it will bother me because I have grown with some maturity. Here in the background of this text in James, beloved, here in the text this morning, James is not questioning the belief of the audience of the Jews for they know Christ but the problem with their faith is that they have a problem with carrying out their actions what they say they believe yeah. oh, Deacon Brown know where I'm going for we'll ask you all the time do you love Jesus? <laughs> don't answer that, don't answer that because the right answer is not always what you do believe because everybody going to say oh I love Jesus uh, for in this lesson coming up this week, he has Peter three times. Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? There's a reason why Jesus just didn't ask him one time. And I'm asking you, do you love Jesus? Don't fool me now. For, for, for the, 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 the action of the, the evidence is in your walk. For you can't hide your walk. You can tell me anything, but you can't hide yeah. your walk. For we are like this. We, 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 we are sometimes like this saying, he loves me. He loves me not. And just because I don't see God's hand every now working in my life at the moment, I know that he loves me. I wanted somebody to know that just because you don't see the evidence that you want right now. I want you to know that he loves you. Because his word says that he loves you. How do I know that? For in my last verse 18, he says, he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. If that's not love, I don't know what it is. Now, God says that you and I are his prized possession. So, beloved, I, I know that he loved me because I said his word says so. And so, my response to my situation won't be determined by how I feel. I know I just lost my child. I know the doctor can't figure out what's wrong. Yes, my husband has filed for divorce. Yes, my kids are running crazy as Coco Cuckoo Pop. But I don't worry about the situation because I have become mature. I know the word said that he has plans for me, that he's going to prosper me. And so what I'll do is remain steadfast, unmovable. In the word of God and I want to let you know today you can't upset me because I made up in my mind I'm going to be steadfast unmovable say what you want to say but I'm standing here with Jesus is there anybody this morning going to stand with Jesus see I'm not standing by myself I'm, I'm standing with him. Yeah. I'm standing in him. Yeah. Uh, so whatever you come at me with, uh, yeah. it's okay because Jesus yeah. got my front and he's got my back. Yeah. He's got me covered. Yeah. Take your best shot. He's got me covered. Because yeah. I have grown up to be more mature yeah. yeah. with God. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down. Get me nervous, y'all making me nervous. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, 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 God. God says, I got you. And while you may be going through something, it doesn't have to make you respond like you're going in it. He says, uh, I love those who can be in trouble, but still smile. I love those who can be hated, by others will still have a good morning. Yeah. Uh, see, you, you, when you become mature, yes, 
what hits you becomes like that raincoat that you had, that favorite raincoat that just rolls off. It just rolls off. But you got to stop becoming a sponge. You taking every shot that somebody is throwing at you this week. And you walk in here, mean as a pit bull, because you taking every shot that someone has thrown your way. And you're mad at everything. Ah, they took my seat that I wanted to sit. Ah, they sang it too long. Pastor preaching too loud. I'm just mad because you have not allowed yourself to be insulated with the word. And so when folk want to get under my skin, don't you know the, the person that'll get under your skin is somebody who lives with you? Y'all folks, it's these folks here, no. It's the everyday folks that eat your bread, that, that come up into your house, might be hope, might be sleeping with you. Get under your nerves. And you have to be strong enough and not today, say, not today, say. Sometimes, I know you love them, but you gotta say, not today, say, not today. You got to insulate yourself from every shot that people come at you with. Well, let me get on to my three points and get y'all out of here. Well, 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 am I mature enough? Uh, so, beloved, here's three principles that I want to help us. Help us. I didn't say you all. I said help us. So when I say us, I'm saying myself too. To help us become more mature. The first thing that you've got to understand in the text, he said, this will help you to become more mature. Yeah. Here it is. Point one. Make trials, temptation, and testing your praise ground. Make the tease, the trials, the temptations, and the testing your praise ground. In other words, when you expect or when they expect you to cry, you shout. See, that's what you got to do. When, when they expect you to get mad, you smile. When they expect you to cuss, you say praise the living God. Hallelujah. See, you You've got to make trials and temptation and testing your praise ground. Uh, for the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Okay, y'all know some Bible. Then it said, it didn't say that when you felt like it. It didn't say that when everything was going well. It didn't say that when the doctor could figure out what was wrong with you. It didn't say when your kids was acting good. It said, let everything that has breath. Is anybody not breathing right now? Then you ought to be able to scream out a hallelujah. It said, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. For he says that if you make your trials and temptation and testing your praise ground, there's a blessing. I'm not making it up. Look at verse 12. God blesses those who patiently endure. That endure means I got a praise that I got to get out. Because the only way that I can handle the mess that's coming into my life, I've got to praise. Praise will over trump any calamity. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, when somebody tells you something bad or an experience happened at home, you just start calling on the name of Jesus and start to thank him for what he has done for you. Watch the shift. The shift of the atmosphere. Watch the change in you. Watch your demeanor begin to change. Yes, they cussed me out to my face, but I just thank God that they didn't lay hands on me. Oh, I'm thankful to God today. 
uh, that I don't have to respond or acknowledge what they said was true uh, yeah. because I don't have to accept what they called me because you told me, Jesus, that I am one of your prized possessions. Yeah. And because I know my worth, yeah. I don't have to respond to what they called me. Yeah. He says, make trials, temptation, and testing your praise ground. Yeah. Oh, if we had more people who are willing to praise him when trouble comes, we shake up some stuff. Yeah. We mess some things that Satan yeah. thought that he yeah. had us in. Oh, if we could just begin to praise him. Yeah. Matter of fact, he says, you ought to praise him because he said in Romans again, when those tests and temptations come. They're coming for a reason. Now God doesn't tempt you, but he will allow it. Testing he will. Uh, he says when they come, you ought to get happy. He, he says that, he said, we ought to have joy about it. Why? Because they are there to perfect our patience. You can't have patience unless you have some issues. Uh, you you find somebody who's got great patience. Yeah. They have been through some issues. Yeah. But see, we want the patience, but we don't want to go through nothing. Yeah. And God is saying, in order for you to perfect your patience, yeah. you've got to go through something. Yeah. And that is maturing you yeah. to what he wants from you. Yeah. And what he wants out of you. Are you mature enough? Well, let me go to my second point. My first point says, make trials, temptations, and testing your praise ground. Welcome uh -huh. your seats for this one. Uh -huh. Maybe a little graphic, but it needs to be said. Uh -huh. Are you mature enough? Well, well, Pastor, how can I become more mature? Here it is, point two. Stop. Sympathizing with your symptoms and start circumcising the source. Let me say that again. Stop sympathizing mm -hmm. with your symptoms and start circumcising. That means cut off the source. I'm in the text. Verse 15. He says this. Desire comes and gives birth to sin. And when sin is allowed to be born and to grow and to become, your Bible says, fully grown, it gives birth to what? Death. In other words, you got to, and the scripture says circumcision, is important, but we know what circumcision is. But circumcision means you need to cut something off. He says you got to cut it off before it becomes full grown. Yeah. Oh, I, I know. Yeah. You're sitting in the break room and she brings you some cake from home <coughs> and you say to her, thank you. And she says, you know, I wish my wife would cook a cake like this. And she says, well, I'll, you know, I'll call your wife. He says, no, I'm okay. I like your cake. And, and, and you begin to eat the cake. And you enjoy the cake. And uh, she says, hey, uh, what time is your break? And she says, do you come here every break hour? I said, yeah. She said, well, I'll meet you next, next, next day at the What's same up? time. What? And you think nothing of it. And you come to the break room and you sit down. And uh, she says to you, man. You are looking good today. I, I really like that outfit that you got on, Brother Stevenson. You said, well, my, my wife never compliments me on how I look. They're always telling me I got the wrong colors on. I'm, I'm gaining too much weight. And so I, I, I like that. I like that. And you said, well, thank you. Thank you. She says, you know what? You dress well. And you don't think nothing about it. But you meet again on the next break day. And she says to you, Oh, where's your wife uh, at this week? She said, well, you know what? She's out of town, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to have to cook for myself. She said, you know what? No, you don't. She said, how about you just stop by 
and I will be willing to fix something for you. You know, we're co-workers. And you say to yourself, Brother Stevens, we, we ain't nothing going on. We're co-workers. Uh, and then before you know it, you're way over your head. And you say to God, how did I get here? It's because you can cut it off. If you say, I'm looking too good too often, I'm going to have to distance myself from it. Uh, if you keep bringing too much cake too often, I'm going to tell you I'm going on a diet. I'm not eating much more cake. But you got to be aware of your desire. Now, all of us want to be complimented. And you can't tell me this because if somebody compliments you, you're like, well, I'm going back and get a little more of that because I don't get that often. In other words, you want to hear people say you're doing well, you're looking good, etc. All right. But be careful yeah. where that could lead. Yeah. And he says you got to have the wisdom yeah. to know that you can't birth that. Mm. And then you've got to cut it off. Yeah. You see, too often, too often, Immature Christians are willing to patronize their symptom, but they never are willing to deal with the root cause of the problem. Uh -huh. Let me help you. Let me help you. The man in the tomb cried out night and day, naked, and he cut himself, and he harmed himself. Symptom. What did they do? They chained him. Yeah. 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 That wasn't the issue. Right. 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 You're dealing with symptoms, but what's the root cause yeah. of him cutting himself right. and walking around naked all day? He's got demons in him. Yeah. And until you cast out the demon, yeah. you can't deal with the cutting. Yeah. And too often, we deal with symptoms. Yes. Ah, uh, look like uh, he is not uh, dealing with life well. He keeps failing every class. I guess I need to buy him a new video game. No. No. Don't reward the symptom. Find out why he's failing math, English, and social studies. Go to the school and see if the teacher is addressing him right. See if he's in the back of the class or the front of the class and make some adjustment. Don't keep patronizing his symptom. And that's what we do in church. Well, Pastor, that's how they've always been. Go ahead and give them their way. Patronizing the symptom. Have we ever decided to get real and say, Pastor, here's what the root is, but ain't nobody going to talk about that. Yeah. Well, that's what we need to do. Deal with the source. Yeah. The only way you come mature is you deal with the source. Yeah. And too often Christians have become pacifiers of symptom in mature Christians. And the reason they never get to the mature level that God wants them is because they don't really want to get to the root of the matter. Yeah. Why am I so mean? I got to get to the root of the matter. And until I address the root, y'all know that. Put a crown on a tooth that needs a root canal and see how long that lasts. You go back to that doctor. If you ever had a root canal, I've had a couple. Yeah. Doctor, whatever you do, you got to get that out of there. And let me just give you some words of advice. Never go to the weekend. If you're hurting on Thursday, don't tell the doctor the dentist, but I'll see you on Monday. No, baby. Guess what that tooth is going to do? It's going to act up on Saturday. The most difficult person to find on a Saturday is a dentist. Oh, you can go to the emergency room and find other doctors, but you can't find a dentist. Yeah. And that tooth will drive you crazy. Yeah. Make sure if it's hurting on Thursday, 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. Going through the weekend, Doc, whatever you do, get me in. Right. And so we got to know to stop sympathizing with our symptom. Yeah. But we've got to cut off the source. Well, let me go on and close this thing. Yeah. I've told you, I've told you, make trials and temptations and testing your praise ground. Stop sympathizing and with your symptoms and start to circumcise the source. The third thing is, if you want to be more mature, it says this. If you want to see maturity grow in you, point three says, the more love, listen now, the more love you have for God, your ability to handle temptations, trials, and testings become easier. The more you have love for God. He didn't say they will stop coming. No, no, no. They don't come like a flood because Satan don't chase what he already has. And so he's going to go after you. But you can be like Job. You can allow those temptations to come, but you can handle them in an easier way. Right. Haven't you looked at your parents and what they've gone through and you said, maybe I, I, I grew up in the South and I know what my mom and my daddy went through. And I just wondered, mom and daddy, as we've grown up now and, we, and got a new era with us, like, how would they have taken all of that? The baby, you just don't know. That's what they'll say to you, baby. You are standing here because I took some stuff that I shouldn't have, but I knew how to take it because the love that I had for you did not allow me to go crazy. The love that I had for God, it, it allowed me to uh, let some stuff roll off my back. See, when you really love God, it's right here in the text. When you, when you really love God, he says you will have love, patience, peace, joy, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I just read y'all the fruit of the Spirit. When you really love God, if you got all of that in you, you got to be mature. Amen. You're not going to let some Tom, Dick, and Harry mess you up Amen. because you are insulated with all of that yeah. that Christ has poured into you. Yeah. Oh, I wish that we really know what it meant to love God. Because yeah. when we love God, he says, what would you do if you love me? You'll owe and keep my commandments. You see, so when somebody says, uh, you can't tell me how much I love God, yes, I can. Yeah. Come on, I just I just watch your action. Yeah. You can't tell me how serious I am about God. Yes, I can. Yeah. Right. The tree is known by the fruit yeah. that it bears. Yeah. Uh, I don't speak to everybody. Well, you got some issues. Yeah. I didn't say you gotta go home with them, but you ought to be able to. Open up your mouth and say, good morning. Yeah. If you got to dodge me and go out the other side, yeah. you got some issues. Yeah. If nobody can work with you on a committee, you've got some issues. Yeah. Yeah. If we always have to prep ourselves before we have a conversation with you, yeah. you've got issues. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying you ain't a Christian. I'm just saying you got some issues. Yeah. And so when you need to grow up, yeah. you ought to do like the scripture said, let a man examine himself. Yeah. See, we, we got an examination for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can tell you what they wore, yeah. Yeah. what pew they sat on, yeah. how many times they stood up when you said a word. But we can't examine ourselves. But we can clearly tell you what went on. Well, what were you doing? If you can remember all of that, what were you doing? If you can remember everything that went wrong, what were you doing? Did you come to worship? Or did you come to point out faults? I wish we had people who were willing 
to come for worship. We got to grow up and say, I've come for worship. I'll deal with the issues when I get out of here. But while I'm here, I'm here to give God my undivided attention. And so when you love God, you can't take me on a hate trip. When you love God, you can't uh, tell me that God doesn't love me. When I love God, your lies won't affect me. When I love God, uh, the, uh, the setback just says to me, God, get ready to set me up. When you love God, your peace will pass understanding. When you love God, you won't mind giving the shirt off your back. When you love God, you won't mind moving over and saying, I know I sit here often, but I saw you on the spot. It's okay. As long as I can stay in the building. When you love God, I don't have to leave the truth. Just give me a place where I can serve. When you love God, you know then that you mature. It's not about the words, but it says here throughout James, don't just be listeners of the word, but be doers also. I, I ain't making it up. You go home and read James. It says, uh, Brother Roger will tell us that. What did the word say? That was it. He said, what did the word say? Brother Roger said, what did the word say? Yeah. And do it! Yeah. And then you will become the mature Christian yeah. that God is coming back for. Yeah. Yeah. I know the scripture says he's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. But really what that means is he's coming back not for a perfected, perfect church, yeah. but a mature Grown folks, they say, who have been willing to handle some issues, even though it wasn't good, but they didn't respond the way the issues would have wanted them to respond. And so, beloved, that's all I have for today. Are you mature enough? Those of the churches open if you're here.